In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are a faithful God. A God of love, a God of compassion, a God of mercy, and a God of all power. Tonight, Lord, your people are here. Men, women, children, boys, girls, everyone. Lord, we pray that tonight you show yourself strong on behalf of everyone in Jesus' name. Open the way into the supernatural. Open the gate into signs and wonders. Open the gate into the gifts of the Spirit. Open the gate to healing and to health and to prosperity. Lord, we pray your people will have all the desires of the earth fulfilled in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself in everyone tonight. And Lord, we pray that there will be no failure. We will not miss your blessing. This very moment, your blessings will pour down upon everyone in Jesus' name. Drive all those tears away. Take the sorrows away. We feel your plan for everyone. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 22, chapter 2 of Acts of the Apostles, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by miracle, wonders, and signs. Miracles, wonders, and signs. Say that with me. Miracles, wonders, and signs. Can we say that again? Miracles, wonders, and signs. Miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. The Lord is going to work miracles, going to perform wonders, Go to give us signs amidst us here where we'll see, we'll taste, we'll experience in Jesus' name. That was the ministry of Jesus Christ. The summary of everything that Jesus did from the very beginning to the end. And the apostles said that as we summarize the ministry of Jesus Christ, the three words, miracles, wonders, and signs. We're coming to that same chapter, verse 43. In verse 43, it says, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now the Lord Jesus Christ handed over to the apostles. And what we found in the ministry of Christ, we also find in the ministry of those apostles. Miracles, wonders, and signs. Coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, and in verse 36. Acts chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 36. He brought them out after he, had, after he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. Here we learn about the children of Israel and we learn about Moses, the man of God, sent into their midst. Again, we find that the Lord walked through Moses, miracles, wonders and signs. He did that in Egypt. He did it at the Red Sea. He did it also in the wilderness until the very day it was taken away from them if you are thinking of the old testament the chief figure the towering figure the champion figure of the prophets of the lord giver of the teacher is moses and we find miracles signs and wonders then you think about the new testament jesus christ opened the new testament with his miraculous conception miraculous birth Miraculous life, miraculous ministry, and miraculous operation manifestation of the Spirit. And now we have the apostles to open the Acts of the Apostles. And that is exactly the same thing you begin to see in the ministry of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at chapter 4 of Acts. Acts chapter 4, I read from verse 29. Acts chapter 4 verse 29, they began to pray. And what was the content of the prayer request of these apostles? And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. 
Again, the apostles said, the age of miracles must continue. Signs and wonders must continue. And therefore, they prayed. In answer to that prayer, look at chapter 5 and verse 12. Chapter 5, verse 12. It tells us of what Jesus, what Jesus did through those apostles by his spirit. Chapter 5, verse 12, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And so we find Moses, signs and wonders and miracles. Jesus, signs and wonders and miracles. The apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, signs and wonders and miracles. Then eventually the apostles to the Gentiles came. And the apostle to the Gentiles, what's his name? Paul the Apostle. Is anything going to be different? Acts of the Apostle chapter 14. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Long time therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony of the word of his grace, and granted, tell me, signs and wonders to be done by their hands. You see that at every stage when uh, the Lord raises up as somebody that will either minister to the Jews, the children of Israel, or minister to the Gentiles, like this, Paul the Apostles again will find signs and wonders and miracles. Romans chapter 15, talking about the ministry of Paul the Apostle. You're going to find the same thing right there. And the reason why we're saying this is to make us understand that God is opening the way to the opening the gate today. We're going to move into signs and wonders. Yeah. Everything that the devil has deposited in your life tonight, we're going to sweep everything away. Yeah. Any kind of brain damage over there, the Lord is going to touch you tonight. And that brain damage is going to be cleared off in Jesus' name. Yeah. Every form of disease, every form of curse, every form of yoke, the Lord is going to wipe everything away in Jesus' name. The time of weeping, it's over. Time of sorrow, it's over. I didn't see pastor, I couldn't see pastor, that time is over. I was in problem, nobody to pray with me, that time is over. You know, I almost lost my child, almost lost my wife, almost lost my husband, that time is over. There is no job, there is nothing I'm going to do. How am I going to feed all that time? It's over. The way is open today. Enter in and the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. And then let's look and let's look at Romans chapter 15. I'm reading from verses 18 and 19. It says, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and by deed through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem to round about unto Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Again, you find in verse 19 there wonders and signs and the power of the Spirit of God. And this is what the Lord has uh, promised us and we know that uh, it's going to take place. And you will see with your own eyes. In fact, that's what the Lord has said in John chapter 4. John chapter 4 verse 48. The Lord was speaking concerning how people normally act. We're preaching to them and sometimes they say, well, but you know, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. How can I believe at this time? In John chapter 4 verse 48, then said Jesus unto him, he said unto this uh, man, he said, except you see signs and wonders, ye will not, you will not believe. There are some people except they see signs and wonders, they will not believe. They will see more than they expect. Bring your friends, they'll see more than they expect. Bring the sick, they'll, they'll see more than they expect. Except you see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. But the time has now come to see. I will see. I said, I will see. I said, I will see. We will see together in Jesus' name. Uh, by the way, let me, let me show you where your name is in this uh, big Bible I have in my hand. In Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, uh, I was reading and then I saw your name. I said, I will tell you where your name is. Have you ever discovered where your name is in this big Bible? In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, I'm looking at verse 18. It says, Behold, 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 I am the children whom the Lord has given me. They are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. It's telling us that I am the children whom the Lord has given me. Where are those children? Where are they? 
I told your name is there. My name is there. I said, my name is there. We are for signs and wonders in Jesus' name. It says, as long as he is dwelling in Mount Zion, as long as the devil cannot shift his position, as long as demons cannot shift his position, as long as circumstances cannot shift the position of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the Almighty God, it says, I am the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and were for wonders in the land of the Lord. Now, I'm talking to you tonight on the sure sign post to signs and wonders. Sure signposts to signs and wonders the sure signpost that is uh, what 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 makes us assured very certain that there's going to be signs and wonder what makes us very certain tonight that the opening of the gate by this uh, service group and the opening of the door is going to be into signs and wonders that's why we're talking about the sure signpost to signs and wonders I, I divide the message to three parts. Number one, Christ's sevenfold I will. Christ's sevenfold I will. When I hear Christ and he said I will, I turn to this side and hear Christ say I will. I move forward, I, see, I hear Christ say I will. I move backwards a little, I hear Christ say I will. I turn every direction, I hear Christ say I will. Seven times in number of perfection. That's a sure sign post to signs and wonders. Point number two is covenant sevenfold I will. When I look at the covenant of the Lord, and is, he will never break a covenant. He's a covenant keeping God. When God makes a covenant, he keeps that covenant. And when I look at the covenant of God, and he says, I will, I will, I will, he is covenant sevenfold i will when i see that i see the sure sign pose to signs and wonders in the day signs and wonders in the night signs and wonders as we're going on the road signs and wonders anything that happens at midnight when the phones are shut off when the lines cannot get through and when you cannot even call anybody the lord will be with you there that sevenfold I will of Christ, that sevenfold I will of the covenant will be a signpost of sure signs and wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Point number three, the conclusive sevenfold I will. That is, as we look at Christ, I will seven times. As we look at the covenant, I will seven times. And then we come to the final conclusion. And all I can say, all I can see is I will. Lord, will you heal me? I will. Will you deliver me? I will. Will you give me victory? I will. Will you give me supply? I will. Will you be sufficient in my life? I will. Will you remove my mountain? I will. Will you crush my enemies? I will. Will you provide for me? I will. Everywhere I turn, every prayer I pray, all I'm hearing from Christ says, I will. I will. I will. I say, the conclusion is made. I said the conclusion is made. Will you bless us tonight? I will. Will you do wonders and signs? I will. Will you perform miracles? I will. I said then, there, there, there's no problem anymore. I said there's no problem anymore. All those heart aches and all those belly aches and all those brain aches and all those mind aches, everything is gone in Jesus' name. Number one, Christ sevenfold, I will. Number two, his covenant sevenfold, I will. Number three, the conclusive sevenfold, I will. Number one, what's number one? Christ sevenfold, I will. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verses 7 and 8. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 7. Here the Lord said in verse 7, he said, And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. Finish. I will come and heal I will. I will. I will come and heal him. Is your servant sick? The Lord is coming to heal him tonight. Is your wife sick there? The Lord is healing her tonight. Your husband is sick. The Lord is uh, healing, uh, healing him tonight. Your baby is sick. The Lord is healing that little baby tonight in Jesus' name. I will, I will. I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. That's number one. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, tell me the rest. 
I will, I will, I will give him rest. There's no anxiety anymore, I will give you rest. There's no panicking anymore, I'll give him rest. There's no fear anymore, I'll give him rest. And there's no rest in your mind, in your life, I will give him rest. That is, all the anxieties of your life, all the worries of your life, everything is taken away. All the, the kind of perplexity in your life, everything is gone. I will give you rest. Who is going to have the rest? I will, I will, I will. God will give you the rest in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Remember the sevenfold. I've given you one and two. This number three now. In Matthew chapter 16, I'm looking at verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you are part of the church, the church Christ is building, the gates of hell shall never prevail against you. Look at verse 19, verse 19, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I will give, I will, I will, I will give unto you. Every door will be opened. Every locked doors will be opened in Jesus' name. Because you have the key, the key of the kingdom, any kingdom, you will open your way lock. I said you will open your way lock because it's part of Christ's sevenfold. I will, and he says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever, 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 help me, help me, help me say whatsoever, help me say that whatsoever, whatsoever in my life say that, whatsoever in my business say that. Whatsoever in my family say that. Whatsoever in my neighborhood say that. Whatsoever in our church say that. This is the key is in our hand already. We, we have the final say. I said we have the final say. Show me the man that has the key. Listen. He has the final say. Whether you enter in or you come out, he has the final say. Show me the man that has the key of the car in his hand. He has the final say. Whether you enter that car, you move with that car or not, he has the final say. Show me the person that has the key to destiny and the key into prosperity and the key into the joy of the Lord and the key into the power of God. He has the final say. The key, the key of your destiny is not in the hand of the devil. I said the key of your destiny is not in the hand of your enemy. The key of your destiny is not in the hand of somebody who does not wish you good. It's now in your hand. If you say you will do well, you will do well. If you say you will succeed, you will succeed. If you say you will make it, you will make it. Because you have the final say now. The man that has the key has the final say. The woman that has the key has the final say. I will, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever shalt thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Luke chapter 21 verse 15. Luke chapter 21. We're looking at verse 15. Luke, Luke. Luke chapter 21, we're looking at verse 15. In verse 15, this is what Jesus Christ is saying. It is part of a sevenfold, I will, I will, I will. In verse 15, it says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. I will give you a mouth and a wisdom. And then it says, Which all your adversaries put together shall not be able to gain, say, or receive. You know, in our lives, we don't need to be afraid anymore. What if that person confronts me? Well, the past is gone, but for this new day from tonight, let them come, let them say. Whatever they say, you'll have more wisdom. you have more authority. Because the Lord says, I will give, I will give you a mouth, and, and he will give you wisdom that all your adversaries will not be able uh, to gain, say, or receive. I'm looking at John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12, and I'm reading all through to verse 14. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Lord is talking to me here. I said, The Lord is talking to me here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, didn't I tell you he's talking to me because I'm the one I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? I believe he is my Savior. 
I believe he's my sanctifier. I believe he's my baptizer in the Holy Ghost. I believe he's my redeemer. I believe he's my deliverer. I believe he's the one that gives me dominion. I believe he's my king. is the king of kings and the lord of lords. I believe he's my supporter. I believe he's my supply. He's my supplier. I believe he's my rock of ages. I believe he's my refuge. I believe that his name is like a tower. The righteous runneth into it and he's saved. Because I believe, because I believe this verse is for me. I said this verse is for me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father, and whatsoever, and whatsoever, tell me, and whatsoever, tell me, and whatsoever, shout it out, and whatsoever, tell me again, and whatsoever, ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. I will do it. I will do it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, if ye ask, if ye ask, if ye ask, if ye ask, what are you asking tonight? What are, that's part of the anything. That's part, I want to be healed, anything. I want to be prospered, anything. I want to have a brighter life, anything. I want to have a better future, anything. I want to have the joy of the Lord rejoicing evermore, anything. I want to have total deliverance, anything. I want to have dominion, anything. I want to have success, anything. If he has anything in my name, tell me the rest. I will, I will, I will, I will do it. That's part of the sevenfold, I will. I'm looking at John chapter 15 verse 26. John chapter 15 verse 26. And when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you. You will not be comfortless anymore. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth will come to you. Because he says, I will send him unto you from, my, from the Father. Even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father. And then he says, he shall testify of me. And look at John chapter 17 verse 24. John 17 verse 24. Father, 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 I will. You see that? I will that they... Whom thou, whom they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou hast loved me before the foundation of the world. That means that God, the Christ is saying, I will that he gets to heaven. I will that he gets to heaven. Oh, when I leave this place, where am I going? I say, when I leave this world, where am I going? When you leave this place, where are you going? Are you sure? Yes. How could you be so sure? Because he said, I will, I will, I will, I will that they that you have given me, they will be with me, they will see my glory. What a glorious day. You will see that glory in Jesus' name. Sevenfold I will of Christ that no Satan can reverse, that no enemy can reverse. Your healing is sure. Your deliverance is sure. I come to point number two now. His covenant sevenfold, I will. His covenant sevenfold, I will. He makes a covenant with us. It's a new covenant. And in that covenant, all over, all over, all over, he says, I will, I will, I will. I'm looking at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 6. And then I go to verse 8. But now I see obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon, be upon better promises. What it says, better, better, better. What does that mean? He made a covenant with Abraham, and then he says, He's making a covenant with you, and this one is better. And every detail of what he made with Abraham, he fulfilled. He never reversed anything. He never retracted anything. He never took away anything. He said, Abraham, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. And he did everything. And then he now says, he has a covenant with you, which is better than that of Abraham. He made a covenant with Israel. And then all the covenant he made with Israel, I'll take you out of that land. I'll take you to another land that is spring with milk and honey. He fulfilled everything to the letter. And he says, See my faithfulness to the children of Israel. The covenant I made with them. And he's making a covenant with who that is better. He made a covenant with David. And then he said, David, this is the covenant I'm making with you. And he fulfilled every detail of the covenant he made with David. And now he says, that's a better covenant with you. If he was faithful to Abraham, to Israel, to David, he's going to be faithful unto you. 
there is nothing he said I will that he will not do. You can close your eyes, he will do it. You can stand up, he will do it. You can kneel down, he will do it. You can turn your back, he will do it. You can go to sleep, he will do it. In your dream, he will do it. In the night, he will do it. In the day, he will do it. While you are pursuing, he will do it. Because he has said, he has said, it's a covenant. And because the covenant, he will take care of the covenant he has made. And it is a better covenant, it's a greater covenant, it's a higher covenant, it's a wider covenant, it's a more lasting covenant. And if he was faithful to those people at that time, your own time has come. Look at verse 8, look at verse 8. For finding fault of them, he says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will. This is the will of the covenant. The will of the covenant. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 10. This for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their heart. I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. He says he will be your God. He will recreate whatever is damaged, is not functioning because he is the creator and he will be your God. He will supply, he will perform miracles, he will perfect everything concerning you in the name of Jesus. I'm looking at chapter 6, chapter 6, chapter 6. I'm reading here now from verse 14. From chapter 6, verse 14. He's still talking about the I will, I will. Verse 14 says, saying, surely in blessing I will bless thee. And multiplying, I will multiply thee. And that's part of the covenant. He said, the time has come. All the time of uh, what, what will I eat, what will I put on, what will I wear, where will I live. All that time is gone. You are not a beggar anymore. You are the son of the most high. And you are a child of the almighty God. And he has all the cattle on the hills. And he has every supply. And he says, I will bless you. And I will multiply you. Multiplication has come in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 1. Chapter 1 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 4. Being made so much better, so much higher than the angels. As he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee again. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. He's saying that the one who is making this, this covenant on his behalf is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's saying that the covenant he is making is so sure because he has a very intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father. And whatever he tells the Heavenly Father, that he will do. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and he says, that's my beloved, that's my follower, that's my disciple, that's my child, that's a saved soul, that's somebody I love very much. Whatever the Lord Jesus Christ will ask the Father concerning you, he will do it for you in Jesus' name. I'm looking at chapter 2, chapter 2 of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 12, there Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12. It says, and I will declare thy name unto the, unto the brethren, then unto my brethren, in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. Thank God I'm part of that. Then in, in verse 14, it says, For as much then as see as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might, he might, he might, I thought you would tell me out aloud, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. The devil thought he'll destroy you. Before he tries to destroy you, the Lord will destroy him. Your enemies say, that swallow the devil, they swallow demons, they, they are pregnant with demons. And then they say, oh, you don't know what I swallowed, you don't know what's in me, and what's in me is able to destroy you. Before they destroy you, the Lord will destroy them. All those demons, all those evil spirits, and all the devils, the Lord, he has come to destroy them. The one that has the power of death, you will not die before your time. Everything the Lord has ordained, you will do, you will do. The mountain he said you will climb, you will climb. The journey he said you will pursue, you will pursue. 
and the destiny he wants you to accomplish you will accomplish it in jesus name never mind whatever might have happened in the past but that's the past bury the past there is a new day that has risen today and he said he will destroy the one that wanted to destroy look at verse 15 he says and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage no bondage in your life anymore in jesus name i'm looking at hebrews chapter 10 i'm reading from verse hebrews chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 30 hebrews chapter 10 we're looking at it from verse 30 it says for we know him that has said vengeance belongeth unto me i will recompense he said don't answer your enemies i will answer them for you don't try to recompense your enemies i'll recompense them for you they think they could stop your progress but they cannot i said they cannot and the lord said while they are walking this and walking this and building a roadblock and building a barrier and building a demarcation building this and that he said don't worry about them just go doing what you're doing because that place you wanted to go can i see you there you are there in jesus name and then all the people who are trying to build the barricade he said i will answer them for you go, go on doing what you're doing i will recompense them says the lord and again the lord shall judge his people and then let's come to chapter 13 chapter 13 of hebrews hebrews chapter 13 i'm reading from verses 5 and 6 i will i will i will in uh, chapter 5 chapter 13 verse 5 let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as he have. For he has said, for he has said, for he has said, the creator of the heaven and the earth has said, the supplier of all our needs he has said, the healer of all our sicknesses has said, the deliverer of the oppressed has said, the one that makes us to climb all our mountains he has said, and the one that has all power in heaven and earth he has said for he has said i will never leave thee nor forsake thee i will never leave thee nor forsake thee i will never leave thee nor forsake thee uh, have you you know sometimes i uh, found a particular person that uh, you know he said he said he was your friend every time you're able to give some you know little naira little currency little whatever i'm your friend i'm your friend i'm your friend anytime you're able to give a plate of rice you're able to give i'm your friend i'm your friend and then maybe some things uh, you know happen one day of the week or one week of the month you are not able to give that said where is this as if uh, you know he, he deposited some money you have you say, I'm sorry today. It looks like uh, I may not be able to. Okay, I'm going now. <laughs> then you feel sad. You feel there's something taken away from you. It's like, you know, a rag. It's like, uh, you know, one uh, kind of uh, shirt that is not fitting anymore. It's dirty. It's not useful anymore. It's taken away from you. And then you're feeling some vacancy. You're feeling some emptiness. You're feeling some vacuum. And then the Almighty, the owner, the possessor of heaven and earth, he said, why are you worried? I will never leave you. The prodigal son has left you, but I will never leave you. The prodigal daughter has left you, but I will never leave you. The prodigal, you know, whatever beggar has left you, but I will never leave you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He said, when you turn to this side, I am with you. When you move forward, I'm with you. When you look this way, I'm with you. When the one that owns the heaven and the earth, the king of kings and the lord of lords and the almighty and the omnipotent, the omnipresent one and the, om om the omniscient, the one that knows everything, the one, anything he needs anytime, he can send an angel to go and pick that and bring it you and he said i will never leave you i will never forsake you i think you know that the same one should rejoice evermore i thought you should rejoice evermore how long are you going to be rejoicing forever and ever and ever you will laugh you will never stop you will rejoice you will never stop because this one that owns the heavens and the earth and the one who is going to heal you tonight the one who is going to deliver you tonight. The one who is going to provide for you tonight. And the one, maybe you are not married, you say, well, this, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm, I'm well. All I'm looking for is I'm looking for a wife. A good wife comes from the Lord, you have it tonight in Jesus' name. A good husband comes from, you have tonight in Jesus' name. Because this provider of all the needs of your life, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. What do I do now? Look at verse 6. So that we may boldly say, The Lord 
is my helper and i will not fear what man shall do unto me praise the lord uh, come, come back to this chapter 10 of hebrews hebrews chapter 10 we're looking at the covenant sevenfold i will hebrews chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 16 hebrews chapter 10 verse 16 here it tells us this is the covenant that i will make with them after those days says the lord i will put my laws in their hearts and in their mind will I write them. And their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. I will remember no more. I will remember no more. You know, uh, the Lord said, everything, every bad thing you did in the past, he said, I will not even remember. What a wonderful promise he has given us. He said, go free, go free. That is, all the strings, all the ropes tying you before, you wanted to move forward, then guilt and condemnation will turn you back. The Lord said, why are you worried about that? I forgive you. When I forgive, I forget. I will not remember them against you anymore. Uh, somebody help me praise the Lord over there. Then in verse, in verse 17, and their sins and their iniquities, I will remember no more. Now, where a mission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a, with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an, from an evil conscience. No evil conscience anymore. Give me a good amen there. Yeah. And our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise the one who said i will i will i will in his covenant sevenfold seven times over is a faithful god he will not deny himself in jesus name Amen. number three now the conclusive sevenfold i will the conclusive sevenfold i will what does this mean almighty god said i will jesus said i will when you now come as a child of God and you join your I will with the I will of the Almighty God, I will coming from heaven, I will coming from earth. When the I will coming from heaven meets the I will coming from earth and they meet together, there's an explosion of miracles. Explosion of signs and wonders in your life. Let me show you the sevenfold I will that concludes everything, that finalizes everything. There's no shadow of doubt that brings the miracle, the signs, and the wonders. The conclusive sevenfold, I will. Number one, Luke chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. Luke chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, at thy word, at thy word, I will, I will let down the net. When you say there was failure in the past, but you are telling me from this sevenfold I will, there is success, I will. What you want me to do, I will. Move forward, I will. Get up, I will. Walk, I will. Believe, I will. Be healed. I will be delivered. I will have dominion. Multiply. I will. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will. That brings the conclusion. See what follows. We're told in verse, in verse 6, and when they had let down, what well, they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. That means a uh, net-breaking blessing has come. House-breaking blessing has come. It will occupy your life, occupy your family, and then they'll be running over, running over, running over. Your cup is filled and running over. Since the Lord met you, and since the Lord gave you the sevenfold, I will, your cup is full and running over. Everybody say, running over, 
running over, running over. My cup is filled and running over. Since the Lord melt me, I'm as happy as can be. My cup is filled and running over. It will run over in Jesus' name. My Luke chapter 9, verse 57. Luke chapter 9. We're looking at verse 57. Luke chapter 9, verse 57, I will, I will. And this is your own I will that meets with the Almighty God's I will. It says in Luke chapter 9, verse 57, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Isn't that the secret of blessing? The Lord, the Lord is going to the land of victory. He's going to the land of promise. He's going to the land of joy. Joy everlasting. And then you come, you say, Lord, I will follow you whithersoever you go. They take the district church over there. I will follow them. They send the satellite church over there. I will follow. And it is over here now. I will follow. I will. I will follow you whithersoever you go. I'm telling you that such people, the blessings of the Lord will run after you and overtake you. You'll be blessed in the day. You'll be blessed in the night. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed in the church. You'll be blessed in the house. You'll be blessed in the office. You'll be blessed in the classroom. You'll be blessed everywhere you go because you make your own I will join with the will of the Almighty God. I will follow you whithersoever you go. I'm looking at Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. The conclusive sevenfold I will. Luke chapter 15. I'm reading the there from verse 18. Luke chapter 15, we're looking at verse 18. At verse 18, this is what it says, and I will arise and go unto my father, and I will say unto him, I have said unto my father, I have seen against heaven and against thee. This is a prodigal son. He said, why am I languishing here in poverty and hunger, and I don't have anything to feed myself? I know what I will do. I know the covenant keeping father, I know the loving father. I know the compassionate father. He is not going to just abandon me like that. I am the one that has just uh, abandoned myself here. I'm going back home. And I know my father will not reject me. Our father will not reject you. Wherever you have gone, however far you have gone, you have gone to that mountain and to that valley. You are looking for this and looking for that. And you have not got what you are looking for. You are disappointed. You are dejected. It appears that even the other person says, okay, you run there. What have you got now? Then you say, I will, I will arise and go back to my father. The day you come back, everything you lost, you are going to recover everything. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. And all the provision you have lost, you'll get everything back again in Jesus' name. And then look at this in verse 20. And he arose and came. He didn't just say, I will, and then sat down there. He arose and he came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. The Lord will see you tonight. And he had compassion on him. And he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servant, Bring forth the best robe, the best, the best is waiting for you. I said, the best is waiting for you. It doesn't matter how you have squandered your blessing before, and all your experiences before you squandered everything, you lost everything foolishly. But the Lord said, The best is now awaiting you. Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put the ring of authority on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. We're going to rejoice because of you. Heaven will rejoice because of you. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Why are they merry? Because of me. I said, why are they merry? Why is heaven rejoicing? Why is the church rejoicing? Your joy will spill over to the whole family in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. I will. I will. This is your portion, and this is your decision, and this is your own. I will meet him, the will of the Almighty God that brings explosion in uh, Psalm 18 from verse 1. I will love the old Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The Lord is your deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. I will, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who 
is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. You are saved, you are delivered, you are protected in Jesus' name. Psalm 77 verse 11, 77 verse 11, I will, I will, I will. Psalm 77, I'm reading from verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. She said, I will remember what the Lord did in times past. I will remember the miracles he performed in times past. And if he did that in time past, he's going to do it for me tonight. He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Verse 12, I will meditate also of, of all thy walls and talk of thy doings. Then you'll say, he healed that person, he will heal me. I will meditate, he healed that leper, he will cleanse me. He healed that fellow, he is going to heal me. He woke up, that person brought revival. He's going to bring revival to me because I meditate on the works of the Lord. That's my decision, I will, I will, I will meditate. I'm looking at Psalm 101, Psalm 101. I'm reading there from verse 1. Psalm 101, verse 1, I will sing of mercy and judgment justice unto thee. O Lord, I will sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. What does that mean? Well, we behave according to our state of mind. According to our condition of mind. That is, when you are sad, it's the way you behave. When you are happy, that's the way you behave. When you are discouraged, that's the way you behave. When you are enthusiastic and up and doing and excited, that's the way you behave. The fellow is saying, because I now know that God said, I will. I will heal. I will deliver. I will save. I will bless. I will multiply. I will do better to you today than ever before. I'm happy now. And because of my state of mind, my state of mind determines the way I feel and the way I act. And it says I will behave myself. I'll behave myself like somebody who is happy, somebody who is joyful, somebody who is excited, somebody who is saying, the Lord is for me and the Lord is with me. Therefore, my behavior then tends to please the Lord. Look at that verse again. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way oh when will thou come unto me i will walk within mine house with a perfect heart i will set no wicked thing before mine eyes the thing that used to make me happy when i was far away in the far country as a prodigal son as a prodigal daughter prodigal wife and prodigal husband prodigal daddy and prodigal mommy and prodigal whatever prodigal worker that ran away from the work of the lord the way i used to do over there when i wanted to eat even the horse giving to the swine and i couldn't eat that I was sad and morose and then I behaved as if I'm a dejected rejected person, no hope and no life and nothing whatever but now I've come back to the house and because I'm back to the house, I'm joyful, I'm happy, I'm going to rejoice ever more. Because of that I will no more set the wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside it shall not cleave unto me give me a good amen. Psalm 55, Psalm 5, 5, 55 I'm reading verses 16 to 19. Look at this. This is what it says. It says, as for me, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. I will call upon God and the Lord shall heal me. I will call upon the Lord and the Lord shall provide for me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. The Lord will hear your voice. In verse 18, in verse 18, he has delivered my soul in peace. From the battle, from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them. Even he that abideth of old, then he says, Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. What's the conclusion of all this we're talking about? About the sevenfold I will of Christ. About the sevenfold I will of the covenant. And about the sevenfold I will that brings everything to a conclusion. What's the conclusion of everything? Look at this in Psalm 71. Psalm 71. Psalm 71. I'm reading from verse 7. Psalm 71, verse 7. Do I see your picture here? Look at this. Look at, look at this. In Psalm 71, verse 7. I am a wonder unto many. I am a wonder unto many. For the gate open today, I'm a wonder unto many. 
with your doors open today, you are a wonder unto many. With all your sicknesses healed tonight, you are a wonder unto many. With all your chains broken, you are a wonder unto many. And with all the heart aches and all the trouble, the sorrow, everything taken away, you are a wonder unto many. And then with all the harassment of the devil, everything taken away, you are now a wonder unto many. And then when I call your name, you must know that I'm calling wonder. Wonder. Sir. Wonder. Sir. Where are you? Get up and tell the Lord. Now I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder. Signs and wonders and miracles in your life. Because the Lord said I will. The Lord said I will. Something wonderful is taking place. Something wonderful is taking place. Something wonderful is taking place. The Lord has seen you. Why Paul does he has away? No, no need to weep anymore. Wipe all the sorrow away. No, no need to be sorrowful anymore. Every negative thing that happened in the past, yes, the Lord knew. That's why it came to your life tonight to say, I will. I will. I will. I will. The Lord has willed it. Something good, something great, something marvelous. You become a wonder. Because supernatural sets are taking place. I've shown you the disciples of the signs and the wonders of the supernatural. The gate is now open. The gate is now open. If you feel any, if there's any guilt or condemnation, you tell the Lord, Oh Lord, take the guilt away. I'm sorry for the past. And that's done. You're back leaning and say, Lord, I return. That's done. You're a sinner. You've never known the peace of God. I want the peace of God. Save me, Lord. It's done. Forgive my sin. It's done. It's done. It's done. All the attics of the past gone, guilt of the past gone, condemnation of the past gone, the body of the past taken away, the yoke broken, and the Lord sets you free. And the gate now is open before you. And I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you open on earth is open in heaven. Whatever you shut on earth is shut in heaven. Whatever, whatever, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Praise the Lord, this is yours. No sickness again, no weakness again, no infirmity again, no iniquity again, no tiredness again. From within, you are made strong. And you go from strength to strength, you go from faith to faith, you go from power to power. From tonight, your life will never be the same anymore. You'll shine and shine and shine for the glory of God. As your days are, so will your strength be. As the time is, so will your strength be. As the challenges are, so will the solution be. The Lord will never leave you, He'll never forsake you. He will be with you. In the, at the crossroad, He'll be with you. In the corner, He'll be with you. On the road, He'll be with you. Everywhere you are, He will be with you. You'll never lack. You'll never lack. You'll never lack. He will bless you. He will do better unto you right now and in the future than in your past. Your, your future will be brighter, 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 and better than the, than the past. It's done. It's done. It's done. Pain is gone. Sickness is gone. Head, uh, head injury and head uh, malfunctioning is gone. That, that joint uh, pain is gone. And that pain in the bone is gone. And then the back that is not able to withstand, uh, take your weight, all that is gone. The running tummy, all that is gone. The running nose, everything is gone. And the dimness of eyes, all that is gone. The perplexity and the confusion, all that is gone. Because the Lord has come to your life tonight saying, I will, I will, I will. Seven times over, I will. And you are a child of blessing tonight. You become a wonder to everybody beholding you. Become a wonder to everybody that sees you. You'll never be the same again. Never be the same again. Never be the same again. The one that wanted to crush you and destroy you and oppress you. That one is destroyed. It's taken out of the way. Go ahead now. Go ahead now. Move on. Move on. Move on to your destiny. Move on to your destiny. Move on to your destiny. There's something good before you. Something good before you. Something good before you. Don't fold up yet. Don't fold up yet. Don't fold up yet. Don't give up yet. There's something still in front of you. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. There's something ahead of you. Some stretch. Stretch. And you will touch. Move on. And you will catch. 
don't give up don't look back don't look back the future is brighter than the past in jesus name we pray brother wonder sister wonder where are you press up your hand from tonight wonders will never stop in your life miracles signs and wonders you turn to the left wonders turn to the right wonders you move to the poor wonders you go to see somebody you've never seen for some time as you're coming out wonders in the church wonders at home wonders those things you prayed about many years ago and you've forgotten about it now without you even remember it will come in jesus name wonder of all wonders the lord will never stop that in your life keep up those and father in the name of jesus we thank you because tonight the gate is open the door is open wide for every brother for every sister i pray oh lord they move into your wonders and signs and miracles now in jesus name lord i pray for every wonders who are sick i pray lord touch them right now heal them in jesus name every form of pain every form of sickness take it away from their bodies in jesus name all the impossibilities make possible all the roadblocks clear them away all the hindrances take away the sorrow the sadness and the palpitation of the earth take everything away in jesus name that infirmity and that deformity i pray the lord will touch you right now i will take that infirmity away we'll take that deformity away in jesus name the things you feared in the past the people you feared in the past the spirits you feared in the past I command all those things, get out in Jesus' name. Lord, in place of poverty, let there be prosperity. In place of sickness, let there be health. In place of oppression, let there be deliverance. In place of slavery, let there be dominion. In place of sorrow, let there be joy. In place of barrenness, let there be fertility. Miracle children. Miracle children, miracle children, give unto them in Jesus' name. And those who have been wanting to catch victory and catch success and catch ramp before their hand touches is gone again. Oh Lord, I pray this time, give it to them in Jesus' name. Let your sevenfold, I will, become yes and amen in every life. And Lord, everything you tell us to do, even though it was failure before, we're going to do everything now, it's going to be success. From this very moment in your life, my brother, your life, my sister, your life, my child over there, son and daughter, wonders. Miracles, healings, deliverances, provision, prosperity, good luck, success victory to victory higher and higher greater and greater will you go in your life in jesus name all your chains are broken all the things that tie you down they are, they are broken move on now to your victory receive it now receive it right now be blessed in jesus name lord we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray brother wonder sister wonder in Jesus name we pray